Hi everybody, this is Noelle with Petiti Garden Centers and we are gonna do a plant spotlight on pothos, or some of us say pothos. Whichever way you wanna say it is fine because did you know that is their common name? So most of them are in the Epiprenum family, okay? And they're also known as devil's ivy, just so you know. Um, but they got that name because they grow like the devil, meaning that most of these varieties are so darn easy to grow as houseplants that they can really grow, you know, six feet of stem within like a few months. So it's really a great easy houseplant to start with. Um, I will have to say with light, they are one of those plants that you can put in indirect light. Don't want to put them in direct sunlight, but really any area in the indirect light category. So you can put them in bright indirect light. You can put them in medium indirect light. You can put them in low indirect light and they're going to do fairly well for you. I'd say sometimes when you get them in too low of a light condition, you might lose some of the modeling or some of the variegation or some of the color. But other than that, they really can grow in just about any light. For temperatures, just average household temperatures, they can take it a little bit cooler. I probably wouldn't grow them under probably 50 degrees inside. They might be able to tolerate a little bit more than that. But I would say that's probably the lowest you want to go. Highest you want to go, probably around 85, 90 degrees. So again, can tolerate a good range of temperatures for us. Um, also, with watering, I think these are one of the easiest plants to know when to water because you can keep them at average soil moisture to slightly dry, but when they really get dry, they will wilt and you will see them wilt. You don't want to get to quite that point, but when you see them just start to drag a little bit, that's when you're going to want to thoroughly rewater. And I'll tell you, they take it so nicely where they'll absorb the water, everything that they need, and then go ahead and just perk right back up. So you can top water these guys, you can bottom water these guys, no problem whatsoever. And again, within probably about 30 minutes, whoop, they're right back to where they started from. So they really are very, very easy to water. Um, the next thing with maintenance, I think the biggest thing, they really, they don't have a lot of problems. So I think with maintenance, just keep an eye out. You know, we always talk about scouting through your house plants, making sure you're not seeing any of those typical indoor insect issues, things like spider mites or mealybug or scale, those types of things, because they can occur. Um, we bring them into the house all the time, um, just from being outside from day to day, okay? But normally, not a lot of problems. And I will have to say, if you want to propagate these guys, they are so easy to propagate from tip cuttings. So you literally do want to take a true tip and then go ahead and cut to where there's a node. And with pothos, they are, there's usually a little bit of a stubby root right there starting, and that's great. You'll be ready to go. So you can take that tip, go ahead and cut just below the node go ahead, you can actually root them in water. You can also go ahead and put them in a moist potting soil and they'll, they'll root very, very quickly. So it's, it's just an easy plant all around. Have I said that they're easy enough already? Um, I think the other thing we need to know about these guys is they're fast growers, they're very, very vigorous. So fertilizing them, you don't need to use a lot of fertilizer. Like most house plants, we just wanna fertilize them during the growing season and we can just give them a little bit. So if you use a slow release fertilizer like Osmocote, usually one application of Osmocote in the spring is gonna be pretty good for that whole growing season on pothos, okay? So just keep that in mind. Um, other than that, I think, you know, there's a lot of varieties here. Most of the pothos, they, they get kind of, um, or pothos, again, I interchange them. Um, they get kind of clustered in with philodendron a lot. So I was gonna show you just a little bit of a difference between a philodendron and a pothos. So um, let me show you golden. Golden's really beautiful. This is um, Epiprenum uh, arium, okay? And this is the typical type of uh, pothos that you do see out there 
in the garden center and so forth. And it has that beautiful golden modeling on it. But if you look at a leaf to leaf comparison, their leaves are not as defined heart shape as a philodendron's heart shape leaf. You can really see that, that cleft kind of at the top there with the philodendron. But also there's something else that you can look at. You can look at the petiole or the leaf stem. And on a philodendron, they're a little bit more round. And if you look at a pothos, they sort of have an indentation down the middle of the petiole. So that's something else too. And then one other thing that I can think of right offhand is when philodendron produce a new leaf, they have this little kind of papery covering or brack covering over the new leaf that sort of dries up and falls down. And every once in a while you think, oh my gosh, I lost a leaf on my philodendron. Not the case at all. It's just that protective layer. And the uh, pothos do not produce that. So a couple of differences that you can look at when you're looking at different types of plants and trying to compare, like, is this a pothos? Is it a philodendron? Those are some things you can look for. Other than that, we have Enjoy. This variety is a beautiful white and green variety. This is probably one of the slowest growers, just to keep in mind. So if you don't need a fast trailing plant, this would be a good variety for you, especially if you like the white and green variegation. Um, this is Marble Queen. She's probably my favorite and probably the first one that I have grown a um, long, long time ago, but beautiful white creamy modeling on this plant. Classic, classic variety. This is neon. Neon is supposed to look like this. Um, it really is just a beautiful chartreuse, bright chartreuse yellow. Um, if it gets too much sun, it will burn. So there's an edge on this plant that's a little bit burnt here. Um, if it gets not enough light, it'll be more green in color, okay? Now, I have a very cool one. This is Cebu Blue. And this is actually a different um, species of the Epiprenum or the pothos, um, this is, um, oops, I lost it, pinnatum, or bi bibnatum. No, it's one of those. So needless to say, you see Cebu blue here, beautiful sort of narrow silvery blue leaves, but again, beautiful trailing. And I should have mentioned that your pothos can grow down, trail down, so they make great hanging baskets, but you can also train them up so if you get a moss pole or even a wooden plank, they can start climbing. So they're good trailers, they're good climbers. And then these two are actually, I have silver satin here, has a little bit uh, larger leaves, a little bit more um, wider modeled area with the silver. And they're not quite as glossy as some of the other pothos. And that's because this is a synapsis. Um, so they're a little bit different, but they, again, kind of get lumped in with the pothos varieties. And this is just silver. So there's a little bit different, smaller leaf. Again, that mottled silver color, but a little bit of a smaller plant there, okay? So enjoy your pothos.